If you know a thing or two about wildlife, you've probably heard that some animals can abandon their children when threatened. But what about getting rid of offspring that wasn't even born yet? Female rays do this if they're approached by a shark or if they feel threatened in some other way. But abortion doesn't always happen so that the female can save herself. Oddly enough, this is a chance to save the offspring. Yes, most likely the kids will be very weak and small, but the predator will prefer to eat an adult prey, not chase every small fry. Turns out the mother sacrifices herself for the sake of her offspring. Sharks, by the way, act the same way. Fishing-induced births have been observed in 88 different species of sharks and rays, including endangered species. That is, when the female is pulled out of the water, she tries to give her offspring a chance to live. It's estimated that one in four pregnant females on average release offspring prematurely. But for some species, it happens 85% of the time. Something similar happens if the mother accidentally ends up on the shore. Maybe she won't get to the water, but the cubs will have a chance. I don't know exactly how the baby rays are supposed to make it. Apparently, this is their problem. On the one hand, it may seem like an insane strategy. But think about this. Both sharks and rays appeared on our planet a very long time ago. Their common ancestors swam in the oceans 200 million years ago. And since sharks and rays are still not extinct, it means this strategy works. Actually, animals get rid of their offspring during pregnancy much more often than you might think. And each of these cases is justified from an evolutionary standpoint. Take the Bruce effect. In 1959, scientist Hilda Margaret Bruce noticed that pregnant mice abort when exposed to unfamiliar males. Other lab rodents and also domestic horses do the same thing. And then it turned out wild animals do it too. Like for example, gelatas. These are creepy looking primates? No, really, look at them. But why get rid of an unborn child? Turns out the reason is resources. If the leader of the group changes or a new strong male shows up, he'll surely kill the cubs from another male. In terms of nature, this means a lot of wasted time and effort, so the females do everything themselves, and then give birth to offspring from new males. These new cubs will surely survive. Have you ever seen quokas? Charming, smiling animals which always seem to be in a good mood. No, really. Seems like they're always smiling, even when they throw their kids at a predator. What, they don't seem so cute anymore? Quokas sacrifice their offspring to save themselves. And I must say, it's much easier for them to do this than for sharks. After all, we're talking about a marsupial animal, and tossing a cub away from a pouch only takes a couple of seconds. Well, baby quokas have no chance to survive. But enough about bad parenting. Let's better talk about animals who are ready to do a lot for the sake of their kids. Like alligators. Did you know that female alligators literally sacrifice their skin just to lay eggs? And this is not a rare case but something that happens all the time. In any season, one alligator can lay up to 40 eggs in a clutch, which in total amounts from three to seven ounces of calcium. This calcium doesn't appear out of nowhere. Females use osteoderms, their built-in subcutaneous armor. Scientists even took x-rays, ran a bunch of tests, and found out that the osteoderms of nesting females are indeed much lighter and not as dense as those of other gators. Over 10% of the calcium in alligator armor goes to form the eggs. How? Scientists haven't figured this out yet. But they've already managed to find out that the ambient temperature of the developing eggs determines the gator's sex. No, literally. 86 degrees Fahrenheit produces females. 91 degrees Fahrenheit, males. Although Steve and I didn't find information about female alligators trying to warm up their clutches and produce males on purpose, but then we came across surprising information about bears. Actually, these animals try to stay as far away from humans as possible to increase their chances of survival. However, sometimes females with cubs, on the contrary, tend to get closer to human habitation. No, it has nothing to do with the search of food. The female bears use us as a human shield. Look, it's quite simple. If a female bear with cubs meets a male in the forest during the mating season, her cubs are doomed. There's practically no way around that. More than a third of all brown bear cubs die during the mating season. Males account for more than 90% of the deaths. And many female bears know about it. They also know that even the most aggressive lone male wouldn't want to get close to humans. Just think about it. People protect some bears from other bears. And it works. Bears are actually quite smart animals. Smart enough to plan ahead. Sometimes they're even too smart. 
so much so that they can deceive humans. Although when you look at pandas, they don't strike you as particularly smart creatures. They're fluffy, funny, clumsy fatties who notice that people really want them to breed. At panda breeding centers, staff immediately react if the animal starts showing signs of pregnancy. The panda is transferred to a separate air-conditioned room, enjoys the best food, including fruits, bamboo, and even buns. In short, these are perfect conditions and constant care. This is how they treated a panda named Ai Hen. But two months later, they discovered that she faked pregnancy. Yeah, just to get access to delicious food and other stuff. The thing is, panda pregnancy is poorly understood, and it's almost impossible to determine that this particular panda just wants more buns. So in the end, Ai Hen was deprived of her privileges. Must have been very frustrating. But don't worry about her. Two years later, in 2016, this panda really got pregnant, gave birth to a male, and finally got as many buns as she wanted. You feel that? It's like it's getting cooler. No? Well, that's because you're not an Australian zebra finch chick. Sounds incredible, but these birds really sing to their unhatched chicks to cool them down. Okay, first things first. As soon as the surrounding temperature rises above 79 degrees Fahrenheit, zebra finches give a call to their future offspring, and this slows down the growth of the chicks inside the eggs. What for? Well, when you live in Australia and it's pretty hot around, having a small body helps you deal with that heat by losing heat. Physics at work. The rest is simple. If you suffer from the heat, it's difficult to find a mate and leave offspring. If you don't, well done. Evolution is on your side. But of course, zebra finches are not the only creatures on the planet who sing to their unborn kids. Female dolphins do this too. Moreover, each mother-to-be makes unique sounds perhaps so that the calf gets used to the voice and can recognize it later. Even after giving birth, the mother continues to sing to the baby for a couple of months, and the rest of the dolphins try to be quiet at this time, not to interfere. Oh wait, I got distracted by dolphins and completely forgot to tell you something else about bird eggs and parental care. Bird eggs come in a wide variety of colors, but studies show that, in general, the logic behind their coloring is quite simple. The colder the climate, the darker the egg laid by the parent birds. You get it, right? Dark eggs absorb more heat than light eggs? This keeps the chicks warm while their parents are looking for food. Scientists even created a map of the egg colors. Everything checks out. But just in case, they ran studies on chicken eggs. Well, brown eggs heat up faster and cool slower than lighter ones. Okay, enough about eggs and birds. Better check out mongooses because they've developed a special system for caring for their pups. The vast majority of mongoose mothers in a group give birth on the same night. Well, maybe at slightly different times, but in such a way that in the end, no one could understand whose offspring belongs to which mongoose. Doesn't sound like a good idea, but actually this is how every cub gets exactly the same amount of care, food, and training in all sorts of useful skills. All baby mongooses are equal have the same chance of becoming adults, which means that the whole group will flourish. For mongooses, it's very important that their group is big enough because these guys engage in gang wars with other groups. Fighting regularly results in serious injuries, deaths, and reproduction. No kidding. Some males and females from different clans manage to procreate right during gang wars. As good a time as any, right? With the exception of gang wars, mongooses are very good at parenting. As for cuckoo catfish, well, it's probably trying its best. This cuckoo catfish puts its eggs in the mouth of cichlids, which raise their young there. Cuckoo catfish eggs develop faster, and by the time the little cichlids appear in the mouths, the intruders are already quite hungry. Well, it's clear what happens next. Sometimes an adult cichlid does notice that there's something odd in its mouth, in this case, the baby cuckoo catfish develops and hatches somewhere outside. But then when the mother cichlid releases her offspring outside during feeding, the catfish can still sneak into her mouth. If cichlids could figure out what's happening, perhaps they'd somehow prepare and protect their offspring. Although this fish could hardly be as ingenious as a tiger keelback, when a female of this species becomes pregnant, she crawls into the forest to eat as many toxic toads as she can find. 
The logic behind this behavior is simple. The snakes don't produce their own venom, which means they have to use someone else's toxin for protection. But the future offspring simply won't be able to quickly eat a toxic toad. It won't fit into their tiny mouths, and they'll be in danger. So snake mothers diligently build up a supply of toxins. Their kids simply need to have them. And here I thought that buying a stroller, a crib, and all sorts of training is hard enough for future parents. We'll see you later.